In this lesson, we're going to apply CSS in order to present our website more like what our original design looked like. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our design quickly to look at that. And now we're going to open up our editor and I'm going to shrink that HTML part and create the CSS larger and I'm also going to update the themes here to update the sizing to make it slightly smaller so that we can get a better overall view of our source code that we're going to be using to create, create this website. Because uh, we are going to need to refer back to the different element sections that we've been building out for our website. So the first thing that we do usually with CSS, I like to start with the largest tags first and the first one that we encounter is the body tag. So this is where all of our content is held and this is our main body area. So I'm going to just set something up here within CSS for body and this is where if we had a particular background color we could add that in. So if I have a background color and I'm going to use a grayscale layout right now because of the fact that I don't have my color schema picked yet. Uh, so this is where I'm going to use grayscale and we see that this all gets presented in grayscale. Uh, so now going down to our main container areas so we can actually update some of the styling for container as well. So this is for the class container and there is some default styling already in Bootstrap for it. I'm going to just open up Bootstrap really quickly. So this is a Bootstrap CSS file, so it's not the minified version. So this actually is where you can actually see the actual code laid out. The minified version is without white space, so it's a little bit harder to see. So we see that container has different sizes uh, depending on... So it's got these preset sizes in Bootstrap. So it's got our padding there, margin left, moderate, margin right, automatic, and that's what's centering it. And then we've got this 15 picks of padding. So we noticed originally when we added in container within these elements, we saw that we got this, this indenting of the content and we saw that it was also centered. And this is all coming from Bootstrap, so it's just over here. And the other thing here about Bootstrap is that we've got the different sizes. So we've got for min width sizes, because Bootstrap is mobile first thinking, so that's why they're using the min widths. Uh, but we're probably going to be using the max widths within our website because we're actually designing from the desktop version down. So those are the two different ways to design. You can get relatively the same idea, uh, just with the min width, uh, you're setting out what the container is going to be like depending on the size of the screen. So if it's larger, if it's uh, past the 760, then this is the size. If it's uh, with a min width of, of 1200, then this is the maximum size the container is going to sit at. Uh, so anything larger than 1200, it's going to have a container width of 1170. And the same thing goes for these breaking points. So this is so we get a better idea of the content that's available within Bootstrap. And I can actually go ahead and I'm going to shut that uh, Bootstrap file and go back to our regular uh, our regular CSS because I just want to quickly show you what is contained within Bootstrap and we don't really need to overwrite any of it. I'm going to set background color and I'm just going to use white. So now when I refresh it we've got our main container areas and we see that we've got uh, white background uh, for the text as well. Uh, the other thing that I usually like to do to set on these defaults, so in the body, I also like to set my hyperlinks, and I don't have any hyperlinks, so I should add some in. Uh, so hyperlinks are one of those things too that it's really nice to uh, to set these within your CSS because uh, this really does give your your site a different look and feel. So I'm going to just create a couple more. And I'll show you how we can make them stand out. So by default, because we've attached Bootstrap, we already have a little bit of styling here uh, where we don't have our uh, decoration. It's only showing up whenever we, uh, we hover over it. So this is all coming from here, from Bootstrap. When I remove that, we see that we get these underlines. 
and I usually like to add this in uh, just to double sh to be double sure that we don't have any text decoration and we can set our, our colors so we don't have these standard blue with the underline on all of our text. I like to do text decoration none and this is also being brought in from Bootstrap and this is where we can set a nice color that we want to utilize. Uh, so maybe I'm going to click dark blue there and I'm going to bring this Bootstrap file back in. So it is, it is already in there. Uh, it already does have some preset coloring to that, but I just wanted to double make sure that if we ever are not using Bootstrap, then that we already are setting these. So it's always a good practice to get into. So even though Bootstrap has it, uh, it's always a good idea that um, we do set it as well. And it also has the hover there. So you saw whenever we're hovering over it, it, it is changing color. Uh, so maybe I'm just gonna pick a random kind of bluish color. So when I refresh it, uh, so now I've got the same thing that Bootstrap was doing, but I've just added in up here. Uh, we can also, uh, we've set the background of the container, and now we can begin building out the rest of our content. Uh, so we're going to start with the navigation bar first, because uh, this is right here at the top. So we're going to start within the head section, and we're going to make all of our updates to the head section, update the logo, and then work on the nav bar. So that's all coming up in the next set of lessons.